So we are going to talk about solving homogeneous differential equations where we get complex roots. So we're going to look at this differential equation as an example. We know we want to guess that y equals e to the rt. And then if we plug that in here, y double prime will turn into r squared, y prime will turn into just r, and then a y by itself will disappear. And now we have r squared plus 2r plus 5 equals 0. We can't factor this directly, but we can use the quadratic formula. And that will get us to the solutions of r equals negative 1 plus or minus 2i. Now, if we're following the form of the solution we guessed here, y equals e to the rt, you might be tempted to say the solution will be y equals c1 times e to the negative 1 plus 2i t, and then plus c2 times e to the negative 1 minus 2i t. We've just plugged in our two values of r to this equation right here. Now, if you wrote your solution in this form, you wouldn't technically be wrong, but it also wouldn't be very helpful. Because remember that our original differential equation only has real numbers, which means this could be modeling a real world situation of something like displacement over time. So having complex numbers in it doesn't really make that much sense. So what we want to do is try to take this equation here and transform it into something that uses only real numbers. In order to do that, we're going to look at this e to the 2it and e to the negative 2it in terms of Euler's identity. So to start out, notice we have an e to the negative t in both of these terms right here. So let's factor that out. And then we're going to get c1 and we'll have e to the 2i t. Well, e to the 2i t is going to be the same as e to the i times 2t. And by Euler's identity, again, there's a proof in the description, this is going to be equal to cosine of 2t plus i sine of 2t. So we can actually go back to our original equation here and write c1 cosine of 2t and then c1 i sine of 2t, just like that. Now if we want to look at this second one right here, we're going to again get c2, and then we'll have cosine of negative 2t this time, but cosine of negative 2t is the same as cosine of 2t, so we don't have to worry about that. Then we get c2 i sine of negative 2t. Well, sine of negative 2t, sine is odd, so that's going to be a negative sine of 2t, just like that. Close the parentheses over here. And now what we want to do is break this up in terms of the cosines and the sines instead of c1 and c2. So we'll write y equals e to the negative t. And then if we look at the cosine of 2t, we have a c1 and a c2 right here. So c1 plus c2 cosine 2t. And then if we look at the sines, we're going to get plus e to the negative t and then c1i minus c2i over here times sine of 2t. And if we look at these two things right here, c1 plus c2 and c1i minus c2i, those are both going to be arbitrary constants. And in fact, if we wanted to say c1 plus c2 equals some number a and c1i plus c2i equals some number b, these equations are always going to have a solution. We'll always be able to find a c1 and c2 such that we get a and b to be whatever numbers we want to be, which means we can actually rewrite this equation as y equals e to the negative t times a cosine 2t plus b sine of 2t. And now we notice that we've taken out all of the imaginary numbers and we're just left with a real solution. So in general, if you're trying to solve a homogeneous equation and you get complex roots, the real part is going to end up as e to the power of rt, just like we expected. But when we look at the complex part, here we have 2, and that 2 is going to translate to what we multiply in the cosines and sines. So we get 2i right here. That's going to be cosine 2t plus b sine 2t, just like this.